Hey, this is Annex, and it's been a while since I did a tutorial and I wanted to do this one on sound effects because I know I've been promising it for a while and my voice quality is a little worse, less good than the other tutorials because I'm using my GoPro so the video quality is better but the sound quality of my yeah, mic input is less because otherwise there would be a yeah a lag between what my microphone is doing and what the GoPro is like live streaming to my OBS studio. Anyway, so I want to talk about sound effects and I'm going to be using Ableton. Um, but again, yeah, the theory is the same in Ableton as it is in other DAWs because I'm just going to work in the arrangement view, as you can see on the screen here. And the cool thing about sound effects is they really give uh, the song you're doing, yeah, more crunch and more interest and more like feel to it because you have arrangements that's relatively easy, it's cut and dry. Uh, you have melodies and harmonies, you can figure those out quite uh, easily and put them in where they want. But really what gives it more depth and more personality is the sound effects. And you can really make it unique also to your own certain style this way and add a lot of variance to what you're doing with sound effects. So that's why I wanted to go over them. So you should see the, yeah, we're in arrangement view now in Ableton. And I'll go over a couple different uh, types of sound effects, but the theory to applying them in Ableton is the same. So making the effects envelopes will always be done more or less the same way, regardless of the, yeah, the type of effect that you're using. So this is just some random little song I'm working on. So I have my groups, like at the top is the like melodies group. I have my instruments, then I have a percussion group, which is yellow for me. And I have some risers and stuff, which is gray. This one I don't want here. But the vocals is pink and the kicks are, yeah, red with the base of the kick as the blue. And if you didn't watch it yet, if you're interested, you can go watch my tutorial on making a kick. I have two tutorials on that. So this is what the first part sounds like. So that is just how it's getting started. Um, what I first want to show you is, so you can hear obviously the piano, there's this other kind of flute instrument, uh, there's this uh, big nasty synth that's an omnisphere. But what I want to talk about now is the um, this, I believe, so the percussive elements, not the rise and hits. Yeah, here it is. So. What you hear, um, let me show you it again. So this is really the yeah, background percussion. Okay. So this is the background percussion that you're hearing and it's really common also to use this in French core because it moves it along pretty quickly. And these VSTs are also really nice to use because you don't have to go in and program Kind of your own drum set uh, for this you can just use something like this so this is heaviosity damage and another good one is also um yeah this heaviosity the master sessions which is ensemble metals and just the other one oh yeah of all mutations is also quite good so the reason i'm showing you this is because you have um so we have our MIDI input, so it's just a key that I'm playing on here. So you have MIDI tracks and audio tracks, and you can do sound effects on either one, but I'm going to show you here a MIDI track. And here I just have like the, this is the keyboard note that is being, so we're putting in a MIDI trigger of note F3, and that goes into this VST to trigger this instrument. And you can see my, you can see the distortion is being increased and also the drive is being increased. Oh wait, the drive's not increased yet. The drive is increased in another part of the song. So what these effects do, uh, so you have options of distortion types of effects here and you also have options of uh, lo-fi types of effects. So distortion is when you take uh, sound or sound wave or an audio input, whatever, and you compress it in a way that's not harmonic. 
Um, so harmonic distortion uh, leads to something that sounds a bit better, that's more like saturation. Uh, but this type of distortion, um, so when the, you literally compress the sound wave, the waves are hitting a peak uh, yeah, more quickly. Uh, so when they, like, that happens, it creates distortion because it, instead of the waveform kind of flowing as it wants to, it kind of gets stopped and turns back onto itself in different ways. So it's the type of compression and you control how it's compressing, compressing itself with these different uh, knobs. So this is the tone of the change. I don't know if there's really like a, yeah, I don't know a good way to describe tone, uh, but it makes it more. I think it moves it more into the higher frequencies and it makes it more prominent in the sound here. Another one is the drive. So that, that doesn't actually do very much here. We don't need it a lot. And if you have low fi so the two settings I'm changing on the lo-fi are the number of bits. So I'm taking it from a high number of bits to a low number of bits. And if it's a low number of bits, it's going to sound more like yeah, Game Boy or like a 90s computer game rather than something that's really yeah, developed more. And the sample rate is the same idea. So a high sample rate is you have more of a, a rich kind of um, realistic sound. And a low sample rate is you're going to have a yeah, more kind of the same idea as lower bits. So when the, we turn this off. So it goes from pretty much like noise or like white noise to the effect this way. Oh, that's why the sample rate's off, sorry. And then for sample rate, we're gonna turn that back on. And you can do really cool things also with the sample rate to make it more like industrial techno type stuff. Uh, so anyway, those are types of effects uh, you can use. And let me show you how I'm applying them. So you're seeing on the Ableton screen itself, there's these envelopes here. And the envelopes in Ableton, you can also do them in the MIDI clip. If you do them in the MIDI clip, you have to go over to uh, here and then you can edit the envelopes now this is an Ableton 10 but otherwise and today I'm doing it in the arrangement view so in arrangement view we're going to so you see this grayed out part here that means there is an automation envelope but it's not turned on now so we want to go to this uh, orange arrow at the top and click it and it means it enables the automation envelopes for all the tracks you have in the arrangement view that you're seeing and also, if you don't see the arrangement, if you don't see the automation envelope, uh, click this thing, because this turns it on and off. So this button here, if you are working with audio samples, it lets you adjust the audio sample to have it fade in or fade out. But for the most part, I work with this on. So because I'm working with automation envelopes a lot. So let's see, what does this automation envelope do? So basically the envelopes here, so it's tracking what you're doing. So basically turning the knobs we saw before, it's just doing it for you. So if you compare it with like what would be a, yeah, like a hardware instrument, if you're literally turning the knobs on that, I think you're turning the knobs on your VST, so the virtual instrument instead, and this is tracking them and it's also doing it for you. So you don't have to do it. So this one is connected to, so we have this contact five, so we know this is connected to this particular VST. This is the only library I have loaded, so it's playing on this. And it's going to be applying, so I have envelopes on all these different um, yeah, effects knobs within this VST. And this one is showing you the LPS. Turn that one off so you hear this better. So that would be the tone, I'm guessing. Okay, let's look at this one. So this distortion tone, this is LPS 
one. So you see it also maps to the, um, the da, 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 da. it has the, the distortion tone also, uh, the lo-fi bits, and that was under the lo-fi kind of this other channel here. So you just have to go through and find where the, the effect is that you want to modify and then edit it this way. So I drew this in my hand and this is what it's doing. So you see that the, you see that the tone here is increasing over time. So it's basically like this is the amount of effect that's being applied um, as it moves from, where is it? Like second four in the arrangement to seconds like eight and a half. So it's increasing from zero percent so 77% of yeah, what the minimum and maximum of that uh, effect would be. And then when I take it back down again, so this just lets you, it literally automates things. So you don't have to go through and turn this button yourself. If you did want to do this, so you notice here, now the gray has turned into the, red envelope, automation envelope that's on your screen, it's turned into gray. But then this is how I can draw it in again. And you can also record uh, this way. So this is recording changes that I make. So this records changes that I make if I just record with this normal record button in session view. This other little record button is, or sorry, this big record button is for session view, arrangement view, and the other one's for session view. So don't really touch this one when you're working with the automation envelopes. So focus on this one. And when you have this record button on, it's going to track what you're doing with this knob. So how much you're turning the effect and it's going to lay it out like this for you. So it's going to literally plot it kind of over time. Think of this as like a little graph in each one of your tracks for how much, so what proportion of the effect is off versus on. So 0% versus 100% as you're going through time in the arrangement. And you can also do like, when you record this, how this tracks. So let's see, I want to do this. So we have two kind of approximates. Um, yeah, I mean, this isn't very clean. If you want it to sound kind of messy, you can leave it like this. Uh, but if you want it to sound more polished, you can just kind of fix it like so. You pull the, oops. so you can pull one of the points here. So it's mapping these points for you and find which point you want the change to begin at to smooth it out. And then just kind of keep pulling it to the right and it will snap down or up uh, to where kind of it, it plotted it when you were recording it the first time. So you can just kind of, yeah, make it a little more clean and find the way that you were changing this actually when you were changing the knob. Yeah. So that is how you draw automation envelopes and it's how you record them also with your software or with your, yeah, actually changing the knobs on the VSD. Uh, you can also do this with your push. I know you can't see my push right now, um, but once you, so if the, um, a lot of things are automatically mapped to your push, like with the, the buttons on the top row. So it's the same uh, when you're recording, when you turn these buttons to increase the effect uh, to be more wet or more dry. So more on more 100% or more 0%, uh, changing the distribution of that. So when you change the knobs, when you turn them here, it's going to record the same as if you were changing them here and uh, let me show you some with vocals uh, so here are my vocals i have some stuff here. okay so i found what i wanted to find and I'm going into my vocals now because it's really cool to work with yeah, changing your vocals and adding effects. Uh, what I'm using now is Tornado. You can also use VSTs like Effectrix. Uh, it just lets you add different types of effects kind of at the same time. 
and it adds a lot more variety to what you're actually working with. So now I pulled this VST onto my track here. This is what it sounds like without you're, any you're not free with your Cadillac. You're doing just exactly what the man wants you to do. But uh, yeah, so then I have, you have these different kind of uh, presets you can work with and these presets just give you a different kind of set of effects that you can apply. Uh, let's stay with beat it, whatever. Uh, so the same thing, as you turn this, it's gonna- You're not free with your Cadillac. Power. You're doing just exactly what the man wants you to do. Buy his goods so you'll never have any real and a lot of these, uh, you wouldn't want to just turn them on and then leave them because then, yeah, the effect doesn't work anymore. So it has to keep looping back on something. In You're not free with your key, 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 with the way we can record this, we go up again to this record. So yeah, what I like to do is play around with it first and see what kind of sounds good like in, yeah, generally speaking, and then go in and record it. You're not free with your Cadillac, 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 exactly what the man wants you to do. Buy his goods so you have any real economic freedom. He wants you to buy it, to buy it, to buy it, to buy it, to buy it on TV so he'll keep Okay, so but what I was doing there is I was changing the parameters on all four of those, um, but it's it's tracking and it's recording each one of them. So if we go down here to the track, we're on track 24, and we have control 5, 6, 7, and 8. So that maps to... You're not free with your Cadillac, 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 Cadillac. You're not free with your Cadillac, 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 exactly what the man wants you to do. Finalizer. So you can see that it's working because when the envelope is changing here, it corresponds to how much the knob is turning on your VST. So again, if I wanted to go back in and kind of make this more clean, I could go to say the first one and say, okay, from this middle point, I really wanted it to increase, like I wanted the effect yeah, set the amount of the effect that's applied to increase more steeply so it's a more dramatic increase. So then I could pull it up this way just with my You're mouse. not free with your Cadillac, 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 and how that fits in with the rhythm uh, and the kind of groove of the song that you're creating. You're, so this is you're, over, you're, 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 you're. This is over four, oh God. This is over four bars, so from bar 47, or, yeah, three bars, so from bar 47 to bar 50. Uh, let's say we're going over one bar instead. So going over one bar, we can break this up into a grid of say quarter notes here. So then we're going from bar 47 to bar 48. And if we want to just increase, uh, so we want half of this bar to be, have the effect going up to 100% and the last half to 0%. And then we have over two quarter notes, it's increasing and over two quarter notes, it's decreasing. Like, and so, like, like, like. If you think of it this way, also it helps with respect to how this fits with the changes in your other notes and the other effects that are going on on a, yeah, on a basis that can be broken down into notes. It'll help make your song more coherent. Okay, so I've talked enough. I hope you found this useful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you found this confusing or actually if you found this useful too, because that's nice to know. And let me know what else you wanna know for a tutorial and I hope I can get around to doing it sooner than I did this one.